firm has existed, I think, officially since 1978, uh, because the firm was founded more or less when I think Delirious New York was published. I joined in 1996, at the, at the mid-90s, when there was already a considerable uh, history to the office, when there was also the beginning of venturing into major US uh, commissions. So I think it's an interesting part of the firm that even though it existed for 20 years, uh, it allowed me gradually to feel the firm also as my own. And, and I think that is rooted in a particular way of working, whereby rather than a top-down mobilization via instructions at the staff, this is a firm that actually actively also harvests whatever ideas the staff might have or whatever ideas anyone uh, in the office may, may have. But the nice thing is that you can come without a plan and develop a plan along the way. Our method is centered around a cultivation of the counterintuitive. Is in that sense that what we're very good is it's when the prevailing modus of looking is in a particular direction, when the spotlights is all on a particular place. It doesn't mean there's nothing around, but it means around it gets dark, and precisely in the dark is actually the new things to be found. The new things simply because they're not in the limelight, so we go against the grain. Therefore, we discover kind of more uncharted territory than we actually are great inventors. I mean, a lot of our inventions are in fact discoveries of what is already there, but simply not in the contemporary focus at any given time. By looking at the architectural community, their main considerations, when you zoom out, are actually turn out to be marginal considerations and in that sense everything we do is a kind of wake-up call to the architectural profession about their own relevance. AMO was, was, was founded at the, at the end of the 90s uh, with the official mission uh, to, to engage in, in a wider range of projects beyond building and beyond urbanism, what are traditionally considered to be the professional domains of the architects to see if we could apply our thinking to a broader range of issues. It was partially driven by clients that initially came for a building, but on closer inspection and on, on asking further and further and asking more questions, turned out that they were struggling with different issues, that they were struggling with strategic, organizational issues to which they thought a building was the answer. Now, it is in an architect's interest to agree with that, you know, because, I mean, when the building is the answer, that is your job. But that never felt satisfactory, because that is then always an answer given from an ulterior motive. We wanted to remove that uh, so that we could give the right answer. AMO is the celebration of thought in the context of architecture, you know, and a prioritization of thought uh, over, over, over materiality. I think there is an interesting phenomena at play is that only when I go outside the office is that I become aware of how we are viewed and the general sense of fame that uh, you know surrounds us in architectural circles. Once you're in the office, once you're with colleagues, I mean that whole awareness, that whole sense uh, completely fades away and, and, and in a way a lot of people, thank God on the inside of the office, are completely immune to any notion of fame. And I think to some extent the whole setup of our office just instills the notion of a place to work. This is just a place to work and that's what you do. And, and therefore also in the, in, in the sheer normality of our working conditions, it facilitates the forgetting of everything people on the outside may think of you which is essential, I think, when you work, not to be overly aware of.